Okay, our next chapter, as promised, is called Bruno Jenkins Disappears. Now, the readers do not know who Bruno Jenkins is, and we certainly don't know how or why he disappears. So let's read to find out. Are you ready? The Grand High Witch was starting to talk again. I am now going to prove to you, she said, that this recipe is working to perfection. You understand, of course. You can set the alarm clock to alarm clock to go off at any time you like. It does not have to be nine o'clock. So yesterday, I am personally preparing a small quantity of magic formula in order to give you a public demonstration here today. But I am making one small change to the recipe. Before I am roasting the alarm clock, I am setting it to go off, not at nine o'clock the next morning, but at precisely half past three today. And that, she said, glancing at her wristwatch, is in precisely seven minutes. The audience of witches was listening intently, sensing that something dramatic was about to happen. So what am I doing yesterday with this magic liquid? said the Grand High Witch. I will tell you what I am doing. I am putting one droplet of it into a very squishy chocolate bar. And I am giving this bar to a repulsive, smelly little boy who is hanging around the lobby of this hotel. The Grand High Witch paused. The audience remained silent, waiting for her to go on. I watched this repulsive little brute gobbling up the squishy bar of chocolate. And when he had finished, I said to him, Was that good? He said, It was great. So I said to him, Would you like some more? And he said, Yes. So I said, I will give you six more chocolate bars like that if you will meet me in the ballroom of this hotel at 25 past three tomorrow afternoon. Six bars, called this greedy little swine. I'll be there. You bet I'll be there. So the stage is set, said the Grand High Witch. The proof of the pudding is about to begin. Do not forget that before I am roasting the alarm clock yesterday, I am setting it for half past three today. It is now, she glanced at her watch. It is now exactly 25 minutes past three and a nasty little stinker who will be turning into a mouse in five minutes time should be at this very moment standing outside the doors. So what the Grand High Witch said is, when you roast the alarm clock to put in the magic formula, you can set it for whatever time you want. Now, when they open their sweet shop, she wants every single witch to set it for nine o'clock so all the children of England are turned into mice at the exact same moment. But for this demonstration, she set the alarm clock for half past three, which means 3.30. Yesterday, she put one drop of the 3.30 mouse maker liquid into a chocolate bar and gave it to a little boy in the hotel lobby. He ate it all up. So today at 3.30, in about five minutes from now, he should be turning into a mouse. She told the little boy, if you like that chocolate bar, come back the next day. Come, come to the ballroom tomorrow, which is now today, at 3.25, and I'll give you six more chocolate bars. So this little boy should be showing up any minute to collect six bars. She's going to keep them there, and so the whole meeting of witches can watch him turn into a mouse. Let's see if it works. And by gum, she was absolutely right. The boy, whoever he might be, was already rattling the door handle and banging on the doors with his chubby little fist. Kvick! shouted the Grand High Witch. Put on your wigs! Put on your gloves! Put on your shoes! She doesn't want the little boy to walk in the room and see a bunch of bald-headed, square-toed, no-toed witches, right? She's saying, put on your disguises. There was a great rustle and bustle of putting on wigs and gloves and shoes, and I saw the Grand High Witch herself reach her for her face mask and put it on over the real revolting face of hers. It was astonishing how that mask transformed her. All of a sudden, she became a rather pretty young lady again. Let me in, cried the little boy's voice from behind the doors. Where are those chocolate bars you promised me? I'm here to collect now. Dish them out. He is not only smelly, he is also greedy, said the Grand High Witch. Remove the chains from the doors and let him come in. The extraordinary thing about the mask was that its lips really did move quite naturally when she spoke. You couldn't tell it was a mask at all. 
One of the witches leapt to her feet and unfastened the chains. She opened the two huge doors. Then I heard her saying, Why, hello, little man. How lovely to see you. You have come for your chocolate bars, have you not? They are all ready for you. Do come in. A small boy wearing a white t-shirt and gray shorts and gym shoes entered the room. I recognized him at once. He was called Bruno Jenkins, and he was staying in the hotel with his parents. I didn't really care for him. He was one of those boys who's always eating something when you meet him. Meet him in the hotel lobby, he's stuffing sponge cake into his mouth. Pass him in the corridor, remember the hallway? And he's fishing out potato chips by the fistful. Catching sight of him in the hotel garden... You'll sure to see him wolfing a dairy milk bar, and he has two more sticking out of his trouser pockets. What's more, Bruno never stopped boasting or bragging about how much money his father made, how his father made more money than my father, that his dad owned three cars. But worse than that, yesterday morning, I had found him kneeling on the flagstones of the hotel terrace with a magnifying glass in his hand. There was a column of ants marching across one of the flagstones, and Bruno Jenkins was focusing the sun on it, through the magnifying glass, and roasting the ants one by one. I like watching them burn, he said. That's horrible, I cried. Stop doing it. Let's see you try to stop me, he had answered. At that point, I pushed him with all my might, and he had crashed sideways onto the flagstones. His magnifying glass had splintered into many pieces, and he leapt up shrieking, My father's going to get you for this. Then he ran off, presumably to find his wealthy dad. That was the last time I had seen Bruno Jenkins until now. I doubted very much he was about to be turned into a mouse, although I must confess that I was kind of secretly hoping that it would happen. Either way, I did not envy him being up there in front of all those witches. Darling boy, crooed, or cooed the Grand High Witch from up on the platform. I have your chocolates all ready for you. Do come up here first and say hello to all these lovely ladies. Her voice was quite different now. It was soft and gentle and absolutely dripping with syrup. Bruno was looking a bit bewildered, but he allowed himself to be led up onto the platform where he stood behind the Grand High Witch and said, Okay, where are my six chocolate bars? I saw the witch who had let him in, quietly putting the chains back on the door handles. Bruno didn't notice this. He was too busy asking for his chocolate. The time is now one minute before half past three, announced the Grand High Witch. What the heck's going on here? Bruno said, looking around. He wasn't frightened, but he wasn't exactly looking comfortable either. What is this? He said. Now give me my chocolate. 30 seconds to go, screamed the Grand High Witch, gripping Bruno by the arm. Bruno shook himself clear and stared at her. She stared back at him, smiling with the lips of her mask. Every witch in the audience was staring at Bruno. 20 seconds! cried the Grand High Witch. Give me the chocolate, shouted Bruno, becoming suddenly suspicious. Give me the chocolate and let me out of here. Fifteen seconds, yelled the Grand High Witch. Well, what do you crazy punks kindly tell me what all this is about, shouted Bruno. Ten seconds, said the Grand High Witch. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one, zero. We have ignition. I could have sworn I heard an alarm clock ringing. I saw Bruno jump. He jumped as though someone had stuck a hat pin deep into his bottom and he yelled, ow! He jumped so high that he landed on a small table up there on the stage and he started hopping about on the top of it, waving his arms and yelling his head off. Then suddenly he became silent and his whole body stiffened. The alarm has gone off, screamed the Grand High Witch. The mouse maker is beginning to work. She started hopping up on the platform and clapping her gloved hands together. And then she shouted out, this smelly brat, this filthy scum, this horrid little louse will very, very soon become a lovely little mouse. Bruno was getting smaller by the second. I could see him shrinking. Now his clothes seemed to be disappearing and brown fur was growing all over his body. Suddenly he had a tail, and then he had whiskers. Now he had four feet. It was all happening so quickly. It was a matter of seconds only, and then all at once, there wasn't any more. A small brown mouse 
was running around on the tabletop. So here's where Bruno started. He's growing fur and losing his clothes, growing into a mouse. It worked. Bravo, yelled the audience. She's done it. It works. It's fantastic. It's colossal. It's the greatest yet. You are a miracle, oh brainy one. They were all standing up and clapping and cheering. And the Grand High Witch produced a mouse trap from the folds of her dress and she began to set it. Oh no, I thought. I don't want to see this. Bruno Jenkins may be a bit of a stinker, but I'm dashed if I want to see him having his head chopped off. Where is he? shouted the Grand High Witch, searching the platform. Where has that little mouse gone? She couldn't find him. Clever Bruno must have jumped off the table and scampered off into some corner or even some small hole. Thank heavens for that. It matters not, shouted the Grand High Witch. Silence and sit down. And that's the end of the chapter. Join me tomorrow for one call for the next chapter called The Ancient Ones. Have a good day.